the Nintendo Switch. It has a load of great video games, which is something a lot of us didn't think we'd be able to say after the Wii U, which had about 10 games, and a few of them were okay. But <laughs> between Nintendo's own online eShop and in game stores, there are loads of fantastic games, and sometimes it's hard to know where to look for the best ones. We'll look no further than, than, this, than this video. That's why you clicked on it, right? <laughs> now, you clicked on this video expecting to see one list of 10 of the best Nintendo Switch games you can buy. However, you're in for a treat. You're actually getting two lists. One is an exclusive list, meaning every game on the first list I'm gonna go through are games you can only get on the Switch. In my personal opinion, these are the top 10 exclusive games in the order that I feel they are the best in. So why am I doing two lists? Well, a lot of my favorite experiences on the Switch aren't exclusive games meaning I could play a lot of my Switch games in other places, like PlayStation, Xbox. I just choose to play them on Switch, and in my opinion, it's better on Switch. I just don't really count them towards an exclusive list, so I, I want to do both. For the most part, I'm not going to be reviewing each of these games in this video. I'm just going to be ranking and listing them. Without further ado, let's get started with my personal favorite top 10 exclusive Nintendo Switch games. Number 10 is Tetris 99, a game that released recently for free. It's exclusive to Switch and it's a load of fun. Number 9 is the Pokemon Let's Go games, both Pikachu and Eevee. I had a really fun experience playing these games with my partner Kim. We would sit in bed with our Switches at night, we'd just be catching Pokemon together, going on the adventure together, and then when we were out of the house with our little Pokeballs, we would be catching Pokemon in Pokemon Go. It just added a lot of excitement to our lives for a while there. We don't play it as much anymore, but it is a really fun experience, and it was just great diving back into Pokemon Yellow, essentially, in a almost perfect remaster of the game. Sure, they did change the catching, and I, I'm still on the fence about it, but ultimately, I like it. Number eight is Xenoblade 2. I know, I, I already, this is gonna be so hard to explain. I don't know how many times I've tried to elaborate this, and it just doesn't get through to some people. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I really don't want to bring up old <laughs> old problems, but when I reviewed Xenoblade 2 way back in the day, whenever that was, I, I personally, I didn't like it. There was a lot about it I wish they had done differently, and it just wasn't an enjoyable experience for me, but I saw its value. I saw what was good about it. Critically looking at it, I could see what was fun about it and what people could enjoy with it, and why people enjoyed the game. And I said that in that first video. I said it's just not a game for me. I really wish they had done these things differently and it would have been a game for me. But again, that doesn't make it a bad game. And I've always said this, I think it's a good game. It's just not a game for me. It's an absolutely gorgeous game, which I had a load of fun exploring the worlds and the towns and meeting some of the characters, the characters that weren't annoying as all heck, but we, we won't get into that again. <laughs> Mostly talking about that stupid gerbil thing. But the quality of the game is undeniable and it absolutely deserves a top 10 spot on this list. I'm putting it pretty low down here. It's still above Tetris 99 because I'm not an idiot. <laughs> and I feel like a Switch top 10 list wouldn't be complete without Xenoblade. I, I honestly feel that way, even if I don't personally enjoy it. And I don't know how many times I can repeat myself and give this game the credit it deserves without you hardcore fans still attacking me on a daily basis about how I didn't enjoy Xenoblade and I enjoy these games, but I don't enjoy Xenoblade. I, I just... Anyway. Number seven? <laughs> Number seven, I have Splatoon 2, a game that I played endless amounts when it first came out and I haven't touched since. <laughs> no real reason for that, I just have a lot to play. I think the quality and sheer funitude of both this game and the first one on Wii U speaks for itself. I mean, how often these days do companies actually introduce new IPs and have them be this successful? I hope we keep seeing Splatoon games. I'll always pick one up on launch and I'll always thrash it for the first month or so and then probably move on to something else, but it's always a great time. Number six, I put Mario and Rabbids, and this might not sit well with a lot of you. <laughs> a lot of people just hate this game. Personally, I really enjoy turn-based tactics RPG style games. Mario and Rabbids managed to put a whole new fresh spin on the turn-based strategy RPG genre. I love these kind of games. And Ubisoft managed to implement so many new and creative elements into this style while having it perfectly wrapped around the Mario universe, including Rabbids. Really fun title and until the new Fire Emblem game comes out, it is the best turn-based RPG strategy game on the Switch. At number 5, I have Golf Story. I never thought I would actually enjoy a game about golf. 
<laughs> but here it is. Number four is Octopath Traveler. A shining example of when a third party developer makes a game for a Nintendo system, if it's actually good, it'll sell incredibly well. I'm pretty sure this game exceeded everyone's expectations. It definitely exceeded mine and instantly solidified itself as one of my favorite RPGs of all time. Okay, the top three. You guys already know what they are. You're probably just waiting to hear what order they're in. And the third one is Smash Brothers. For me, I will always love an adventure game over a fighter game. I can't help that. <laughs> but I would gladly accept any argument that any of these three games, and especially Smash, could be a number one for the system. Do I have to actually talk about Smash? I don't think I do. I think we're on the same page with this one. The second one is Mario Odyssey. The most fun I have ever had with a Mario game, hands down. And I do not know how Nintendo could ever release another Mario game that I would enjoy more than this one. I've never been huge on Mario, okay? I love my, I love me some Mario. Grew up with Mario 1 and 3 on, ne I mean, I had to, just never really loved it. Never super loved Mario 64. I really enjoyed Sunshine. Galaxy's obviously great. But again, nothing, like, nothing was like Zelda level of fun for me in Mario games until Odyssey came around became my favorite Mario game and one of my favorite games ever. Which, of course, makes number one, Captain Toad. No, not really. Breath of the Wild. <laughs> I am still wrestling with myself on the whole Red Dead Redemption 2 Breath of the Wild thing. I was so adamant at the time that that had become my favorite game of all time, surpassing Breath of the Wild and Ocarina, which both mingle and fight on a daily basis. That's the thing with me. I can never really truly commit to a top 10, especially when it comes to ranking Zelda games. So that, that list changes on a weekly basis depending on my mood. I love them all so equally, it's impossible for me to make any kind of list. It was hard for me to make this list. But either way, Breath of the Wild is either my favorite game of all time or tied for my favorite game of all time. It's freaking up there. And not nothing else is gonna be able to compete with my, you know, my favorite game. So of course, it's going to be number one on this list for me. And I feel like a lot of you will probably share that opinion as well as share my opinion on most of this list. But of course, everyone's different and you can leave yours down below. I actually already reached out to Twitter and Facebook to see what other people's top 10s were and they were all very different. Like every single person has their own top 10 and it's, it's great to see. But now that that's done, here's my personal favorite top 10, including anything on Switch, exclusive or not. It was really hard to nail this one down, insufferably hard. Like, there are games that I, I almost wanted to put in the top 10 that I'm not even gonna mention today because there's so many I could put into a top 10, I had to draw the line somewhere. But I do have like a bunch of special mentions, like almost 10 special mentions in and itself. And I'm gonna get them out the way first so that y'all don't expect to see them in the list. And again, everyone is different, okay? Everyone is different. I say that because Hollow Knight is my first special mention. <laughs> we have Hollow Knight, Tetris 99, Fury, Bayonetta 2, Celeste, Fortnite, yes, Fortnite. I had a lot of fun with it on Switch. And Final Fantasy 9. Those were my special mentions. Then, if if we want to do a top 13, I have at 13, Wargroove, at 12, Into the Gungeon, and at 11, Yeez 8. So those three, they're, they're above special mentions. They just barely, barely, barely made it off the list. Number 10, we have Thimbleweed, which for last year was actually my number one favorite eShop only game that didn't have a physical, even though it does now. So my number one made it to number 10, but obviously I still love it. Number nine is Starlink. Pretty much because it's Star Fox, right? It's my Star Fox game on the Switch. At least it's the one that I have right now, but I enjoyed it a lot. I said it in my video about it, which you can go and watch after this video, but it's my favorite Star Fox, not Star Fox game. I've never really loved on-rail shooters, which is what Star Fox is, but this gave me the open freedom to explore galaxies with Star Fox and his crew. And I just adored every second of it. It felt so at home on the Switch, and with Star Fox DLC being an exclusive, it's almost its own weird exclusive on the Switch. Number eight, we have Mario and Rabbids. Number seven, we have Octopath. Number six, we have Dragon Quest Builders. This was the first game 
that I truly got addicted to on the Switch and just could not put it down for weeks and ended up making that first video I ever made about addictive Switch games, which led into a weird series of games I found addictive on Switch. Number five and number four, I wrestled with the order with for a long time, but ultimately number five ended up being Dead Cells. This was one that I not only played for a couple weeks straight after getting it and didn't touch any other game, but it was one that when I started playing other games, I would always come back to Dead Cells and just keep making progress in it in between everything else. And usually I'm the kind of guy that when I'm done with the game or when I move on, I just kind of move on. But Dead Cells was one that I couldn't let go and I still play from time to time. And number four is pretty much the exact same story, Moonlighter. I could not put this game down when I first got it. And even now, like a couple nights ago, I pick it back up and I make more progress. I haven't finished it yet. I don't know if I suck at it or what, what? My Switch says that I've put 20 hours into this game and I'm still going. I feel like I'm getting really close to beating the final boss. I'm in the last dungeon. There's just so much of going into the dungeon, slugging it out, bringing your items back, selling them in your shop, making yourself a little better. Like, it's a grind. It takes time. It's one of the most grindy games I've played, but the grind is fun. Like they, they managed to make that grind enjoyable. And while I can only grind for like three or four hour bursts, which is pretty long bursts, which I'm very much engaged with the entire time. It has me constantly coming back and making myself a little better and then beating the next boss and then being a little better again and rinse and repeating. But this is one that I, I just can't wait to finish eventually. I have so much to play, otherwise I would have finished it by now, but you know. And for the top three, we're gonna have a little bit of deja vu. <laughs> Smash, Mario, Breath of the Wild. Obviously, personally, I prefer that second list. That's my official list of games that I have loved the most on my Switch. But if we're going with exclusives, you have that first one as well. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you came here literally just looking to find out what the best Switch games were, or what at least this random video considered the best Switch games, I hope you learned something too, and now you know what to go out and buy yourself, or Little Jimmy, or whoever you're buying games for. Again, this really was just an easy video to get something out while I'm away, but I hope you enjoyed it regardless. Make sure to leave your top 10 down below. Okay, bye!